As the saying goes, there's more than one way to skin a cat. And that's true when it comes to insulation inside your aircraft. In this short video, we're going to explain to you two different methods of utilizing a bus system insulation. In the first example, we're going to show you how to use the Jetty Central Box 400. And in our second example, we're going to show you how to utilize the MCOTEC DPSI 2018 system. Follow along as James explains in detail how to utilize these systems. Hey guys, James with Jetty USA and Esprit Tech, and today we're talking about bus systems. And the first system I want to share with you is the MCOTEC DPSI 2018. Uh, this is one of my favorite systems. It's the simplest to use, in my opinion. Uh, doesn't give you as much flexibility, maybe, as, as going into some of the other stuff, but it definitely gives you the ease of installation, and it's a very clean setup. Um, the place where you would use something like this is in a large-scale build or a giant-scale build, uh, specifically in the scale aircraft, where you have a lot of things going on in each wing panel. Uh, it helps eliminate having so many connectors because you're running a single wire out to the system. Uh, unlike uh, some of the other systems, it doesn't require programming any servos. Uh, you don't use programmable decoders on the line. Each of the decoders is preset to a specific channel. Uh, so in this case where we have two servos out on the wing, uh, we're simply using decoders that are pre-assigned for channels 11 and channel 10. Um, and it's very simple in the radio. We know in channel 10 we're going to set it up as an aileron, so we do so. Uh, channel 11 is a flap, and so we set it up in the radio that way. So it makes it very easy to do. You have a simple click clock connector for each of the wires that run out to the extremity, so it makes it really easy to break down and set up at the field. Um, makes it very easy to transport as well, as you only have that single connector hanging out of the panel. So once you have that plugged in, it's very easy to see everything is functioning very nicely. And one of the things that, that makes this nice is because we're using the Jetty system with the Emcotec system, I can simply go into the transmitter, go into my servo assignment, take a look at, let's say, decoder number 10, and I want to change the channel of decoder number 10. So I'm just going to go in and reassign that, let's say, to rudder. So now we've combined our rudder and our aileron on that decoder. So it's that simple to, uh, to assign the decoders. To set that back, I simply go up, reset to, to my aileron 2, and we're back to aileron. Very easy to use, very easy to set up. The other nice thing is we are using two jetty receivers in double path, running UDI into the system and telemetry back out. We're getting around 16 parameters of data from the DPSI. Uh, so we're able to monitor things like current and voltage. So you see, you know, we do a big stir, you're able to see right on the transmitter, our live current change as well as the capacity that we've used in that particular flight. So makes it really nice and simple to use. Um, this is a really great system, like I say, for those big scale builds, um, big aerobatic airplanes. If you're an IMAC competitor and you want a, a very simple system and robust system to use, this is a fantastic system because you guys aren't using as, as many servos in the aircraft, but you do want nice connections and you know a good reliability. Uh, definitely one I would recommend for you guys. But again, this is the DPSI 2018 from Emcotech. Okay, now this is our second example of a bus system. We've changed aircraft and we've brought in the Jetty system, the Central Box 400. Uh, this is a lot more flexible system uh, than the Emcotech system I just showed you. Uh, this gives you the ability to run a little bit larger aircraft or a little bit more complex aircraft than what you would want to run with the Emcotech DPSI. Uh, this gives you the option of, of course, running 24 channel output through the system. Um, it's not uh, the same bus system in, in as far as being a single cable output. In this system what we've done is we've used a central box 400 and then we've run individual central box 100s on our wing panels and of course back at our tail. Uh, what this allows you to do is move eight channels of output out to the outboard extremities uh, and have full control over each of those individual locations. In order to do that you'll have two connections. You'll have a power connection and then your signal connection going from the central box out into each panel, or out to each wing, and then out to the tail. Uh, in this case, uh, we've done uh, single power, 
single signal, and then we're running four servos off of each central box, 100. Uh, the nice thing with the CB100s is they give you the ability to, in your device explorer, dial right into, this, into the CB100 and make changes at that level. So currently, you'll see that we've got it set up and we've got dual ailerons set up and dual flaps set up on each of our panels. Um, you can go into the central box 100 directly, which we'll do through our m menu in Device Explorer. And we'll go ahead and go into our central box 100, uh, go into our servo output mapping, and I'm gonna go ahead and just reassign output four from the central box 100 on this wing panel. And you can go in, you can make that whatever you want it to be. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pair that to our rudder. Uh, so now you'll see that our far outboard aileron is actually paired to our rudder, while our inboard aileron is still operating in the aileron set. Uh, that change was simple, happens at the central box 100, doesn't affect your baseline programming at all in the transmitter. So, and just as quickly as we changed it, we can change that back. And we'll go ahead and change that back to aileron 2. And now we're back to our aileron setup. You have the ability to do that throughout the aircraft to make those changes. You also have to keep in mind that you have individual data coming back from each of those central boxes, as well as from the central box 400. So you have a huge amount of telemetry available to you, so you can really monitor what's going on. Uh, we've taken advantage of the voltage regulator in the system to regulate the voltage going out to our CBs, or our, out to our CB100s. Uh, this system would be more um, in a, in a you know, big scale warbird where you had multiple flaps, multiple ailerons, multiple servos out in the tail, and you needed to really be able to dial those in and take advantage of those. And you didn't want to have, let's say, you know, 18 leads coming out of each wing coming back to the, to the, uh, to the main receiver. That gives you a really uh, huge connector uh, or a multi, you know, multitude of small individual connections. In this system, you're only connecting a power and signal lead for each panel or for each remote location. So it's not difficult to use, uh, makes your breakdown just almost as quick as the single plug in the Emcotech, but gives you a lot more flexibility in the programming. Uh, again, this was our Central Box 400 setup. If you have any questions about either of the systems that we showed you, don't hesitate to reach out to us at Jetty USA or Esprit Tech, and we'll see you next time.